Hi everyone, welcome to our very first episode of Afrocentric. Today I have with me Noel. Noel is the founder and the chairman of the African Australian Advocacy Centre and today we'll be discussing the coverage of the last event, um, the last week's event in Melbourne and a media release published by the Anti-Discrimination Office in New South Wales. But before we start, I just wanted to give a few minutes to Noel to introduce himself. So just tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what had inspired you to start the African Australian Advocacy Center. Thank you for having me, Hola. My name is Enoe Zehamwe, founder and the current chairperson for African Australian Advocacy Center. I'm also currently serving on the uh, advisory committee members at the Australian Human Rights Institute at UNSW. Uh, I'm a father of three children, two boys and one daughter. Uh, and the, what inspired me to start the African Australian Center uh, was my passion I have for the community. Uh, my passion has always been working with the people and supporting them uh, to make the change they need. So uh, with Africa Advocacy Center, African Australian Advocacy Center uh, represents the interests of African Australian communities uh, by providing advocacy, uh, research, uh, police outcome, in collaboration with different stakeholders, including but not limited to non-profit organizations, all levels of government, business, industry, uh, the civil sector, academia, and the philanthropic sector. So of course, first of all, I wish to express my concerns about the media outlets that have publicly named and shamed uh, people of African descent. Uh, C agreed that the breaking of COVID-19 lockdown regulation should be regarded as serious and the, uh, the action were undoubtedly wrong. Uh, however, uh, as the anti-discrimination news to say, the recent media release, uh, we need responsive and ethical reporting in a time of COVID-19. All right, thank you for that. Um, you touched on a really important point, but I'm just gonna rewind a little bit back. Um, so just about um, where were you when you first saw the media coverage and how did that make you feel? I was at work and one of our executive members texted me an article published by The Guardian. And in the article, the Queensland Human Rights Commission uh, was conduct, contacted by the members of the Brisbane, or uh, members of uh, Queensland the African you know, communities who say that they've been experiencing a backlash to media stories, naming and shaming those two young women accused of breaching, you know, coronavirus restrictions. Yeah. So of course, uh, uh, I was I was very concerned about, about the media report. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's uh, and then we said it. It started that we, as we said, we condemn whoever breaches those regulations. Yeah. But at the same time, we condemn those people who want to take this uh, this as opportunity uh, to use this as racial discrimination. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I can't really precisely remember where I was, but I knew, like, I just, for me personally, because this is not the first time this had happened, the way media co covers um, African people. So for me, I knew there was something coming. So it just... It's that stress, it's that anxiety that, oh, if I go and, you know, read the comment, I knew precisely what's going to be on those comments. Um, it's the same thing, you know, um, about they should be deported and it's about how they look and how, like, all these things about them being an African, not so much about what they have done wrong. Because it is true what they did is wrong. Um, COVID is very serious and it does put a lot of people in danger. However, like you are saying, um, when you cover issues like COVID, like I think they have done a good job of, you know, trying to keep people, people's face out of the media, people who have caused this, because people in people have a lot of anxiety about COVID and it's unknown. And so a lot of people are scared of it. So if we do, you know, there's a consequence for those who are 
I guess, put on media where the face is shown and, and the address and the full names are put out. And because they, I guess, not following restrictions and stuff like that, we already know the impact of that and the consequences of those things. So what do you think of the way that the media has chosen to um, cover this story compared to other coverage of people also lying about being um, COVID positive and also crossing borders? The public naming and shaming by the media is, count, is counterproductive to, to the promotion of social cohesion that we all embrace. So also that we all value so highly here in Australia. And as you said, African Australians are often negatively represented in Australian media. Yeah. And the communities that we present have expressed a concern that this media campaign will continue to, 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 dis to disenfranchise our members unless we, we, we stand up and do something. Yeah. So we, we're looking at the yeah, IPC. They're already reporting. Uh, there's, an in, there's an increase of an unpleasant interaction by other people. See, the incident was publicized. And we welcome and we thank the, the Human Rights Commission in Queensland. And at the same time, also thank uh, the anti discrimination New South Wales you know, to come forward and then do those media reads. Yeah, we thank for the you know for the action, but from Africa side community, we think it's not enough. So further action should be taken. Yeah. So I have seen a few articles, and one that stood out to me, I guess the one that I saw was um, when they labelled I guess the two young women as the enemies of the state. Do you really think that it was necessary for the media to call these two teenagers? Um, an enemy of the state, and what kind of message is us sending out there to the wider Australian community? So that was unethical, and the media need, especially this time, as the anti discrimination news office said, the media need to focus on providing useful and helpful updates about the pandemic. Yeah, and not to use this as an opportunity to spread the fear, the stigma, and the xenophobia. So yeah. the teenagers, guys, had their right to privacy. And when you look at what happened, the media, what they did, they breached that privacy. Yeah. In that case, the media have fueled discriminatory behavior in our communities. Yeah. That's why from, we condemned that action. Yeah. And it's true, like, um, I think the coverage is honestly unnecessary because regardless whether they cover the story the way they did or not, the two teenagers would have been, um, I guess, they would have received the consequences for breaching quarantine or lockdown restrictions. So regardless, justice would have been achieved. So the fact that they, um, the media felt that it was necessary for them to put their photos out there and present it in the way that they did, like, I think it's very telling of how, I guess, the rest of the community sees the African community, particularly when it comes to, you know, African people, I guess, doing things that counter to what is right. Um, so um, how do you feel about that? And that creates the you know, there's impact on a community as a social cohesion because social cohesion is about belonging, shared values, social justice and trust and the fairness. But when we look at the way media has been reporting this case, so then there's a breach of that social cohesion principles. And and and, and as I say, of course, I agree that the breaking of COVID. 19 lockdown is regulation, you know, it should be, you know, regarded as serious. That's what we've been always encouraging our members, community members, uh, you know, to fall also to be uh, law abiding. So, however, we ask also the Australian media be held to the highest standards, to the highest standards that they see to portray African strengths in a negative light, 
and this will only alienate them and cause additional problems, especially for those uh, targeted people. So we, as I say, the, we are now in very difficult times. It's time that everyone should support each other for the rules or those regula or regulations. It should be the time where we can embrace the word mateship rather than blaming each other. Yeah. Because blame we never uh, resolve any problem. Rather, we increase the harm in a community, and also we, we bring uh, the insecurity, and also we make also our community feel unsafe. Yeah. Um, so the, there has been few media release, um, particularly one from the Anti-Discrimination um, Office in, in New South Wales and also the Human Rights Commission in Queensland. What do you think of this media release? Particularly, let's focus on the Anti-Discrimination Office in New South Wales. As I said, those media releases are very uh, encouraging, you know. So we welcome those media releases. And, and, and as, as I said, like the, we look like the one in the Anti-Discrimination New South Wales. So they are very clear. They say that the media need to focus on providing useful updates about the pandemic and not use this as an opportunity to spread the fear, stigma, and xenophobia. That's the things that we also we you know we agree on at the Triple C. Yeah. So, the, but that's not enough. We need to do. There's some. There's a. We think that further action needs to be taken. Yeah. Because if nothing is seriously taken in this regard, I mean, the issues will always be there. Yeah. Uh, there will always be report, reports, um, of course, uh, showing how community or how individuals are bad are. I know that there's a, you know, there's a many, um, there's many successful African Australians here. And we always, for we always, you know, neglect to report on that. Yeah, I'd love to see that also social media or media outlets also reporting on successful stories of our African descent. Yes, yeah. I'd also like it to see those are our young people who are flourishing in this country, who are in a sport, you know, Australians, you know, sport like soccer, I fair everywhere. I would love to see them also, uh, to see those outreach, media outreach, you know, uh, doing documentaries showing the positivity of those members, you know, of, of the Sunni community, so rather than, you know, blaming them uh, in a negative way. And as, as I said, it's only, we understand that we're in a very difficult time. Yeah. Everyone needs to play, you know, we need to play our own role. Yeah. And we always encourage our people to be law abiding, but we all we 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 are we always condemn whoever who wants to uh, to show that African Australian community is a seen as you know that second. Yes. So for me personally, when I read both media release, for me I felt like they didn't really condemn the media for doing what they did. They didn't clearly make it, um, they didn't state that what they did is wrong. So in particular, for me, I don't feel like it offered me anything that's different because I could have easily formed that ideas and opinion myself. And that's something that's been going on around in media, a lot of African people making the same claim. So do you think this media release should offer some sort of comfort or provide a sort of security for the African community? Can you repeat again the other question? So do you think this media release, like the, so the media release by the anti-discrimination office, do you think it should offer some sort of comfort or a sort of security to the African community? Look, I think they should have done more, but what they have done at least it should be, you should be thankful to be honest, you know, uh, coming forward and then 
say that what the media has done, it's seen as something is xenophobic, you know, that, you know, I think that's where we also, as a community, as Australian, as African Australian community should also come in and also do our part, you know, because, uh, Look, anti-discrimination New South Wales, all the queen, human rights, <clears throat> human rights, yeah, Queensland, like a human rights, you know, commission in Queensland, they have done their part, whether yeah. we we are thankful to what they have done or not. Yeah. What they have done, you can't compare it with what the media, those the media are. Sure. But yeah. the other hand, it's up to us also to, you know, to stand up, you know, and then voice or voice, you know, say, yes, this is from what those, for example, anti-discrimination New South Wales has that published, we think this is how things should be. You know, that's how we see things. That's why the African Survival Center is willing to work with African community uh, groups, you know, so to make sure that also we liaise with the other, you know, other partners, yeah. Uh, to condemn in the strongest voice uh, those, are, you know, those reports, but at the same time also to encourage everyone, including our community members, to be law binding, to follow the, those COVID-19 lockdown regulations, you know, in every state, because it's not by everyone's part in, in, in today's that we'll be able to overcome this pandemic. Yeah, and my thing is that I'm not saying the media release is bad because it's good. It's acknowledging the fact that, you know, they realize what's been happening is wrong. But my thing is because there's no accountability. So you can write letters, you can provide as many media releases as possible. If you don't call people to accountability, then there's nothing like, do you know what I mean? People need to be able to feel a sense of, oh, now if I don't do this, then next time, if I do this again, then you know what I mean? There's going to be consequences for it. And my thing is that it doesn't provide that. It's just another, it's very like, I encourage you to do the right thing. Like there's no accountability for next time. So to make sure this never happens again, because if this consistently keep happening, it does damage the African community. And a lot of organizations are doing a lot of hard work and also government um, councils, um, putting a lot of work into making sure that African people feel safe in Australia. And I think one media coverage like this and also going on social media and seeing all the negative um, comments being left by other Australians, mm. it undoes all the hard work that's been done. But when you look at like, the anti-discrimination New South Wales, even on a title on the head, they said, we need responsible and ethical reporting in yeah. the time of COVID-19. Yeah. And also, when, when, when you go to also um, to other social media, you see that the coverage of the two, uh, those two uh, women has been criticized on also social media. Yeah. So, and many people have come forward and have showed their unsatisfaction about the reporting. And I think, as I said, no man is an island. So we need to, as African community, we need to work together. Yeah. Because collaboration is, you know, is mutually beneficial to achieve common goals. Yes. Yeah. So coming together, raising your voice, working with our partners, we we be able to achieve what we are looking for. Yeah, and of course, taking media, uh, social media or media outlets that have that reported such uh, report. Yeah, asking them to be accountable of their action. Definitely, I agree with that. Knowledge that what they have done, you know, is wrong. As I said, we agree that the breaking of COVID-19 lockdown regulation by those guys should be regarded as something is serious. Yeah. And as we speak now, now there's an ongoing investigation that had not been concluded yet. Yeah. So let's wait to see what the investigation comes up with. But, but I don't, we don't want people to speculate. Showing images and showing um, 
names and address of, of those of people does not help at all. Rather, it creates uh, insecurity in a community. So there is a certain level of, I guess, I guess um, the anti-discrimination office can do so much. The Human Rights Commission can do so much because they are an organization and they have certain level of protocols. But what can the African community do to hold the media accountable for things like this and make sure this never happens again? So, so as I said, no man is an island, especially in human services. It is the effort made together by yeah. two or more communities or service providers yeah. in order to serve our community. So what we need to do is to collaborate together, to come together, work together, raise our voice together. Okay. That's the only way we'll be able to overcome this. Yeah. And I've seen there's many now communities that are coming together to work towards common goals. As we say, social cohesion is upheld. Yeah. Make sure that the, someone's privacy is upheld, is respected. Yeah. You know, if you breach someone's privacy, it doesn't help as we can see. That's why I, once again, I thank for the uh, Queensland Human Rights Commission and the anti-discrimination New South Wales for, you know, you know, for coming forward with those media leads, but further action is needed. Yeah. And would that be from the anti-discrimination office or is that from the um, African community or just anyone? Anyone, but starting with African community we need to work together. Yeah condemn this in the strongest voice. Definitely. And those, of course, people like anti-discrimination in New South Wales will be a key ally to us to work with. Yeah. With also other partners that work in the area of advocacy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Noel, for answering my question. And thank you for being here today with us at Afrin Centric. Um, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you being here and your knowledge as well. Um, just one last thing. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any last words for anyone who's watching this or anyone who's going to be watching this? Well, the, the thing I, I will say, that for, as, as I, I said before, we ask that Australian media be held to higher standard and that they cease to portray African strength in a negative light. Uh, this will only alienate them or and cause additional problems, especially for our communities. Yeah. We also encourage every member to follow the COVID-19 lockdown regulations. And also, we, we encourage our community members to help those who are unable to help themselves during this pandemic. Yeah. And um, to anyone who's watching, thank you for joining us today as well. Um, we also appreciate your time as well. And if you are from African background, please know that, you know, we are thinking of you and we're, we're going to be working together in this. We should always try to, you know, always make our voice heard about everything because I guess then today we're responsible for one another. And so look after each other and make sure you're checking up on each other as well because COVID is real and um, it's there's a lot of stress and mental health issue that goes into it. And I guess the media coverage also really does contribute it as well. So check up on your family and make sure everything's okay. Take care and thank you so much for joining us today. Bye.